So there has been an infighting amongst these uh, uh, prophetesses. One is accusing the other of stealing someone else's <laughs> prophetic word. So this young lady, uh, this one is Joanne. So she says, God is not within her. She will fall. So she has received a prophetic word herself from God that Tiffany Montgomery is going to fall. So she has decided to put it out there. Her, you know, she, from what I've seen with everything that I've heard, her, her profile is growing and Tiffany already has, you know, uh, over 300,000. So she already has a big platform and everything. So according to uh, Gabriel, she calls herself that she's David. And Tiffany Montgomery is so. So Tiffany Montgomery is jealous of David. So all this, according to uh, Joanne, is the prophetic word that she has received. Hi everyone, it's Joanne Gabriel and I'm back with another prophetic word from the Lord. Now I actually received this word on July 7th, 2024. So three days after I received the Covered by Squid prophecy that's here on my page. So I know that prophecy has caused a lot of controversy, a lot of upheaval in the body of Christ. I've been getting bullied, a lot of attacks, like it's just been crazy, right? But the Lord actually gave me this prophetic word titled, God is not within her, she will fall, a prophecy concerning Tiffany Montgomery, three days after the Covered by Squid prophecy, okay? So I've been sitting on this, the Lord didn't want me to release it earlier, but now is the time to release it. So like I said, this will be another prophecy um, concerning Tiffany Montgomery and her ministry called Covered by God. I will also be talking about other leaders in the body of Christ that the Lord wants me to speak on in this prophecy. So I guess this is, you know, a continuation of the dialogue that has been going on and the Lord is finally releasing me to speak. So he ended up finishing this prophecy and tying it up with a bow today, August 21st, 2024. Now, this is very interesting, right? Because early this morning, Prophetess Celestial from the Master's Voice actually released a prophecy against Tiffany Montgomery. And she basically confirmed everything that I said in my Covered by Squid prophecy. Now, she didn't get too deep into the spiritual stuff, but she did confirm that Tiffany is not from God. So Celestial actually goes on to explain that Tiffany is Saul, right? And Tiffany was not called to the office of a prophet. She's actually more of a teacher. And, you know, she just has built this whole ministry and done covered by God when God is not there with her. So she went, but she was not sent. So I do encourage you guys to please watch Covered by Squid. Go look at Tiffany's page. Go look at Celestial's page and then come back to this prophecy because it all ties together. So let's just go ahead and get into this prophecy, right? The title of this prophecy is called God is not within her, she will fall. This is a prophecy concerning Tiffany Montgomery and covered by God. I received this prophecy on July 7th, 2024, and the Lord tied it up and summarized it today, August 21st, 2024. Now, this will probably be multiple parts, just like the covered by squid prophecy, because there's a lot to touch on and there's a lot of scripture as well. So guys, please bear with me. You know, please tune in and just have your listening ears on. So thus saith the Lord. I did not appoint Tiffany to the office of a prophet as I did with my prophet Samuel. So when the Lord told me this, he led me to 1 Samuel chapter 3. And this is the chapter where, you know, God is calling Samuel. He calls him three times and Samuel keeps running to Eli, his covering, right? And he's like, hey, you've been calling me. And Eli was like, I'm not calling you. Then on the third time, right, Eli told him it was God, right? So then Samuel ended up realizing that it was God. God spoke to him and called him to be a prophet, okay? So if you actually go down to 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 19 through 20, let's just read this. So it says here, the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. So guys, 1 Samuel chapter 3 is basically the story of how God called Samuel to be a prophet, okay? So the same way that God called Samuel here in the Bible is the same way he does it today. So with me and other true prophets of God, all of us have had very personal encounters with Christ where he called us and told us that we were prophets. Like there's no denying it. This is why people can call me a false prophet and X, Y, Z. And I, I just don't care because I know what my father showed me. I know what he said to me. You know what I mean? So this is what happened with Samuel. Now I wanted to read verses 19 to 20 to just help you guys understand this, right? <laughs> wow. <clears throat> guys, if confidence alone would send somebody to heaven, I think this lady will be, uh, she'll be, you know, she, she, she'll be on the front row seat. Okay. So she truly does believe that God called her to be, uh, to be a prophet. Okay. To be a prophetess. The same way that God called, uh, Samia. <laughs> I'm laughing because I cannot even believe that this is, 
I, I don't know. Like, okay, you can definitely do twist scripture however else you want to twist it. And now because she's actually going to the text, actually reading it, according to her, God is the one who has called her to be, uh, to be a prophet and everything. Okay, so we, you know, while we have her over here, we're going to go to um, Tiffany as well, Celestia, okay? People's gods, uh, you get attacked for it. Over the last, I think last year or the year before last, I rebuked the body of Christ for going to the concert of um, Beyonce because no believer should be going to the concert of somebody who literally sings and gives homage to her gods. I've also very loudly come against Greek organizations and um, fraternities, sororities, Freemasonry and Eastern Star. Why? Because at this point, we all know about the oaths and vows and covenants that they have made to their organization that should only be made to God. And so over the last few months, there's been a heightened amount of um, videos online calling me a false prophet to be expected. Like none of this is, should surprise any of us because what is letting me know at least is that I have li literally hit some type of altar and these demons are pissed about it. And so what they're trying to do is smear my name, smear my influence and try to make you think that um, I am not sent from God so that you don't actually hear the truth. With that being said, today I'm gonna focus my energy on a woman I call Joanna the Scammer. And the reason I call her that is because she is literally scamming y'all and I just for the life of me can't figure out why you can't see it. This woman has stolen my tagline, Building Bolder Believers. Um, she has stolen my prophetic words. She is trying to steal my life. and. Um, and none of you can see that this is true. But I want to take you back to an email that I found just a few days ago that Joanna the Scammer sent me a few months ago. Many of you know that uh, I have a ministry God gifted me with called Covered by God. And um, back in February at Millions Conference, I announced that I was doing Covered by God college tour. Well, I did not get to these emails until a few days ago. This is like months later. And here I run into an email from who? None other than Joanna the Scammer. Now I need you to know that this woman got on social media and told y'all that God called Covered by God, Covered by Squid. This woman said that she, God sent her to my house, sent her to my bedroom, sent her to my backyard. She didn't see a man in sight. God said, she, she said God told her to get back on TikTok to tell all of y'all that I didn't have a man. One day I'm gonna share with you my testimony. And when I do, I want you to know that in the Bible days, this woman would have been stoned for what she said to y'all. She's operating out of a familiar spirit. She's operating out of a spirit of divination. And I need you to know that she is the very definition of what a monitoring spirit is. A young lady actually wants my life. If she could unzip me, take me out of my body and put herself in, she would. But let me get to this um, email. Hey, Prophetess Tiffany, I hope you have gotten time to rest since Millions Conference. It was such a powerful conference and the King of Glory was in the room. I was blessed immensely by each speaker and your fire message as well. I pray that God continues to protect, prosper and elevate you for his kingdom. As a fellow prophetess, God sent me to Millions Conference on assignment and my main assignment uh, was announced once you announced the Cover by God College Tour. Now I need you to understand that in her video against Cover by God, she said that the Lord planted her in my ministry to show her how demonic it was. But that is not what Joanna the Scammer said right here. She said the king of glory was in the room. Here she introduces herself. My name is Joanna Gabriel. She graduated from Duke University. She goes on to try to tell me how popular she was because she thinks I care about clout. She thinks I care about people with viralness. And um, she thinks that this moves me in any way to want to work with somebody. But God would have told her that that's not how I work. With that being said, she wants to tell me this is just a glimpse of how God used her at her time at Duke. And she hopes to tell me more about the prophecy she received in 2022 that she thinks involves me. She's fully persuaded that God wants her. God wants me. She's fully persuaded that God wants me to speak at Duke University with her help. Okay, so that's uh, Tiffany Montgomery, okay, responding to Joanne Gabriel, okay? In terms of, the, you know, she said she stole your prophetic word. I don't know how you steal someone else's prophetic word. But uh, she ended up having a uh, celestial <laughs> so Celestio has put a stamp on this situation that yes this um this prophecy you, you guys are familiar with Celestio okay Celestio she's also a false teacher herself okay I don't know why these women do call themselves prophets it's so crazy and I'm back with a message, okay? So a lot has been going on ever since Covered by Squid, and now Tiffany has come out exposing me with an email that I wrote this year in March, okay? So a couple of months ago, right? And I just need to give this message, right? So I'm just gonna come out publicly and just, again, say that yes, I did write that email, and you know, all the things I wrote in there came from my flesh. 
So I do take accountability for everything that I said in that email. Like I've explained previously, right? I was actually in Covered by God. And at that point, I was in deep idolatry. I had scales on my eyes. I loved Tiffany. I admired her. You know, when God called me to be a prophet, the first female prophet that I came into contact with was Tiffany, right? At the time, I believed that she was true. But now the Holy Spirit has revealed that she is false. And again, this was before God gave me all of these revelations about Tiffany and told me I have the Jehu anointing, right? So imagine as I'm out of the idolatry, you know, God is showing me all these things. I'm in shock. I'm confused. I'm like, okay, is this from you, Lord? Because I was there. Like, so when God called me out of covered by God and started revealing all of these things to me, guys, I was very confused, much like Daniel. When King Nebuchadnezzar had that dream of him, you know, being cut down as a tree, right? He asked Daniel to interpret the dream. And Daniel, when he got the interpretation of the dream in the Bible, it says he was terrified and perplexed. He was also scared and confused, right? Because he was like, I'm actually serving this king. I'm under this king. And now, Lord, you're telling me that he's about to get cut down. Okay, so it was very much the same thing with me, guys. So again, guys, I sent that email March of this year, right? Your judgment is set. So I made a compilation video basically stitching together my prophecies and the prophetic confirmations of another prophetess, okay? So I need you guys to go watch that video. Um, but yeah, guys, this is all I have to say. I just pray that all of us would be, you know, guided by the Holy Spirit and walk in the truth. The Lord said, I want you to tell these people again that the spirit that is operating in and through Tiffany Montgomery is not from me. It is not from me. It is not of me. It is not a clean spirit. Once God tells you that something is not from him, the thing that God blesses, he says you will see what is mine when you see it still standing. Do you know what this actually is? God is saying that the showdown of Elijah on Mark Carmel is coming with all false things. I won't even limit it to false prophets. God has given me the names of some of America's biggest false prophets. And guess what he said? He said exactly what I told you since 2021. He didn't say, I'm going to shame them. I'll bring them out in the open. God said that he's going to kill these people. This is to Tiffany. I'm telling you this prophetically. If you continue to live by the sword, you will die by the sword. So when you come here, then you, you have to know what kind of servant of God you're dealing with. Because when somebody gets on the internet and starts telling you that God is going to take people's lives, then automatically your mind needs to reset out of what you're used to. And what you're used to is that you know that you have not heard in modern churchy times of someone sitting boldly on the internet and giving you the names of people who have come to the end of their useful existence above the ground. But God has no problem naming people who will lose their lives and sending a messenger to say so because he's always done this. How? Historically. I started this video telling you that if you use your today lens, oh no, it's mean. How can it be mean for God to say that someone has displeased him so much that he takes no pleasure in them and he has no, he has no further intention of sharing the breath of life with them? For the breath of life does come from God. So if the person who owns the breath of life simply says that I'm going to cut off that person's supply, why are you offended? You're only offended if you don't own a Bible. You're only offended if modern Christianity has told you that God has changed and God no longer does that thing because he's in his reckless love era. But if you read the Bible and you know that he says he changes not, then actually it will bring soberness to you the way it has brought soberness to me. So God says only what's mine will remain because he's going to rise and oppose what's not his. Only what's mine will remain and I will shake everything. Only what remains will be what I stand behind and claim as my own. So in the battle of the false prophets, in the battle of the ministries, when you see this has fallen, that has fallen, everything has collapsed. God says the one that you still see standing, whether it's a bigger ministry or whether it's just a grouping of 150 people, he says that's what I'm going to claim as my own. You will see what I'm standing behind. You will see who God is supporting when everything else starts going away and the thing is still there. The thing is still going strong. The thing is still continuing says when the roof blows over and I blow them down like collapsible houses, when the thing collapses in public just like that, you will know all along that you were following a wooden house. You were following a straw house, a clay house. No Guys, wow, man. I don't, I don't know what she's saying, okay? Everybody's going to die. So, hello, okay? <laughs> it has appointed for mine to live once and die after that is judgment. So what... Uh what prophecy are these women uh, trying to give us? Okay. Deuteronomy 18.22. Okay. This is the test of the prophets. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is the word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken presumptuously. You need not to be afraid of him. In the old days that you'll be stoned to death and that that's just it, okay? But right now we have our scriptures, right? Our scriptures breathed out for God, okay? For reproof, for correction, for training that the man of God may be reproved for every good work. So when these people are telling us these things and it's not matching with the scriptures, like it was just like, what are you guys talking about? You're calling yourself, who called you to be a prophetess? 
Please show me. Because you cannot just wake up one day and ordain yourself to be a prophetess. Okay? You can't. Okay? Just like right now, we don't have apostles, right? Because there is a qualification for you to be an apostle. And, you know, we no longer have them. Like people are going to use that. No. So over here, okay, this is Peter. Second Peter uh, 118. We ourselves heard this very voice, born from heaven, for we are with him on the holy mountain. This is them on transfiguration with Jesus. And we have the prophetic word. We have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you would do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Okay? The prophetic word this Peter is talking about is the scriptures. Okay, they saw uh, Jesus transfigured on my transfiguration. But Peter is even telling us, like, even us, we saw that, we witnessed that, right? But what you have, the word of God, it's even more sure than us seeing Jesus being transfigured. And verse 20 says, knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. Because if you say this is what God has told you, that should be the word of God. Simple and straightforward. So according to this, he says, you know, knowing first of all that no prophecy of truth comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So are you telling me these ladies are being carried along by the Holy Spirit? The answer is no. It might sound good, they might believe it, but it's not much in the scriptures, guys. Okay? None. It's not much in the scriptures at all. So, I don't understand why they are fighting, okay? The other one be like, oh, you stole my prophetic word. Like what? If it's the word of God, we want it to go forth so others can hear it. Okay? If somebody's going to, oh, this is what I heard from Vi saying, it's, if it's true, if it's from the scriptures, why would I be tripping about it? I wouldn't. But to them, because they want to, you know, they want to accumulate whatever, whether it's fame or it's, you know, followers or this, whatever the, the case may be, like it shouldn't be. As long as the word of God is being preached, we should be rejoicing. Just like uh, Paul, right? Some preach Christ out of envy, some out of love. You know what I mean? Whether they do it out of pretense or whatever, I do not care. So long as the word of God is big, what? It's going forth, it's, it's being preached. People are coming to know Christ. So these uh, have ordained themselves to be, uh, you know, they are fake prophetesses, in other words. Okay. <laughs>